Hello again, my name is Beyza Ince and today we are going to talk about the IS testing at scale in Trendyol ISD. Before I start the presentation, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm working as an IS developer almost three years at uh, Trendyol team. And last year I joined the IS platform team and we are building more technical stuff in this team. And you can see my team. Also, I live in Istanbul and you can check my Medium articles with this link. Okay. And also before the presentation, I would like to ask a question. How can be sure that all the features in your application are working correctly before the releasing it? As a one of solution, listing the old features and testing them one by one may seem like a reasonable approach. However, as your team expands and uh, adding the new features to the each screen, manual testing can become chaotic easily. As an IS team, the answer to the question of why we are so interested in the automated testing process, we can answer this question is in this slide. Three years ago, when I joined the Trendyol, we there were only four different channels in the project and we were like 20 developers in the team. Also, we only supported the Turkish language. And that day we were aware that we will become a super application and with different functionalities in just one single project. Today we are for than likely most uh, eight different channels and we are more than 60 developers in the team. Also, we started to support English and Germany for the European side and Arabic for the Arabian region. Today, we have more than 5 million daily users in the project. That's why we started to add different test approach in our project. At this point, we have almost 30,000 tests, and for the next year, our goal is increase to this number 50,000. In this slide, I tried to illustrate uh, how we repeatedly uh, increased this number since 2020. These numbers include UI and unit test total counts in our environment. Okay. Now I'm going to talk why we have so much unit tests. In 2020, our main goal was to increase unit tests because we know that unit tests uh, had fewer problems than compared to UI tests. And also we aim to uh, write our functional logics just helper, presenter, and manager class. And we made it mandatory write unit tests this class with every new development. And that day we tried to analyze our problems for UI tests and we wanted to fix these problems with uh, easily. Okay, now we can uh, start to look at our DevOps process. Firstly, we can look at our 2020 DevOps process workflow. In that year, we had just one uh, pipeline for our Jenkins process, and this is unit test. We decided if a merge request could be made based on these results. And now when we look at the 2023 DevOps process, we have several different workflows which help us to run units, smoke, regression, and snapshot tests efficiently in our DevOps workflows. I wanted to take your attention to build and, for, for build and file server circle because we upload the build generated the unit tests to the, our internal file server. With this feature, we can run other UI tests in parallel with just same one build. Now, let's see what this test process includes and how we came up the solution that problems we faced. Okay. In this slide, I try to illustrate the most simple way for our CI-CD pipeline process. As you can see, we have different test approach and also some other step for the, our automated test process. 
Uh, I wanted to take your uh, attention for the last test, last three tests, because except the unit test, other tests are just for the UI uh, checking. We developed this test with using Apple Native's XGUI test framework, and actually uh, we have prob we had some problems for these UI tests. Okay, now let's look at the R pipeline process how we can use this. First of all, when a merge request is open, it notifies the DevOps tool. And DevOps tool uh, is running one Jenkins start process. Now, why need this, this Jenkins start process? Let's discover. Okay, let's first understand our problem. Imagine that there's a developer who has hearts coming out their eyes. When this developer opens an emerge request, we push the unit test job for the running. When this developer pushes a new commit to the same merge request, we run unit test job again. When this developer pushes one after another, we, tr we uh, trigger unit test job even hasn't finished the before the running jobs. Actually, this flow has a problem for us. Because we have limited virtual machines in our environment, and actually it doesn't matter for us the latest commit uh, merge request status. That's why we developed the Jenkins start process. This process has just one responsibility to abort the oldest, uh, oldest running job in the other uh, pipelines. And after that, it triggers the unit test job and completing its task. Now we can start the, our test flows, and the first one is unit test. Unit test has a two main responsibility. The first one is the running unit test, as obvious, and the second one is the upload build to the R file server. This test, uh, we can define this test as a required because if any test is failure in the pipelines, we cannot even access the merge request to the develop. And also this test uh, triggers smoke snapshot and regression test jobs. Okay, as you can see in the example, we can send a message to the relevant developer if any failure happens for the, these pipelines. The developer access the Jenkins build URL with this button. Now we can continue some other challenges in our unit test. Okay, in the example on the slide, we uh, write unit test for the presenter load method. As you can see, we can control the view assertions. Now, imagine there is a scenario when some developer comes here and delete the sum assertion controls in this test. When we run this test again, uh, we give, gave an successful and nothing seems problem right now. However, it's a problem for us because we cannot be sure that anything is failed because of the deletion. With this, and we wanted to improve our uh, unit test process, we develop a tool which give called CVT kit. You can access this kit with QR and the link. We develop this kit with using mirroring method in CVT. By this tool, we reduce our test running time on more than 40%. And also with this, uh, increase our unit test uh, development time. Uh, and right now we can see the example of the debug assertion log. When we start to write any unit test with this tool, we can easily see the what we uh, should write in the unit test. As you can see, we have to assert in mox mode that we should add the unit test. Okay, now we can continue with one example for the CV ticket. As you can see, we write again a test for presenter load method. Before calling the load function, we can be sure that nothing is invoked with invoke nothing method. 
and after that we can check the weave assertions with new uh, syntax. And I think it's really easier to understand what will happen in this test. Okay, now again, imagine there is a scenario when a developer accidentally delete set title labeled control. When we run this test again, we can see this CV ticket is an error on the right with the error message. We have to add set title labeled is invoked in this control. And also we that we, there is an, another scenario when accidentally some developer changed the ordering in this assertion. Then when we run this test again, we can give the error in the CV ticket to order of inbox not expected. With these beautiful features, it increases our unit test development process. Okay, now we can continue the other uh, challenge in our unit test. It's a mock generation. In the past, we used the Swift uh, mock generator for Xcode library, maybe you can know. Uh, but this tool has start, uh, finished to support their uh, open source library. That's why we have to fix the problems uh, with our internal tool. And we generate a new extension with using Mokolo, which developed with Uber team. Actually, we modified this Mokolo library and we create our internal mock class with this easily. Now we can support async await uh, features in the mock class with this tool. Okay. Now we can start other beautiful tests of the smoke test. This is our first uh, UI test when we started three years ago in Trendyol. We define a uh, test as a required for merge request process. We run this test with the mocked environment and with this we reduce our flaky problems in this test. The main purpose of the smock test is actually make it easier to develop regression tests. That's why we have to check every uh, problems in the each commit. Okay, we also write the smock test for each screen in the application and confirm elements on the screen with this test. When any test is finished on our DevOps pipelines, we can send the message to the relevant developer to what is the result. This developer can access the report easily with the report button on the web page. Now we can start to understand what was the challenge in the smoke test and how we fixed them. The first one is actually mock data. Three years ago, when we started to, to develop this test, we used uh, Swifter for mock server. Then after the time, we realized that, that some problems for Swifter, like the long start process. Because time to time when we start the Swifter in our virtual machines, we realize that uh, it has long start process, but not the always. It's the flaky problems. And also Swifter uh, not cover header parameters in the query, and time to time we need to check that these parameters. Also, we uh, realize that Swifter does not uh, cover the dynamic ID problems in the query and it's a problem for us. And eventually, Swifter is a third-party dependency, and when we need to add new features, it's not easy for us. That's all the problems we develop our internal mock server. But in the future, we will this mock server as an open source. Okay, we develop this tool with using Swift UI, and it's a native macOS tool. These mock servers start really easily all the time and we do don't have any flaky problems. Also, this tool cover all header parameters and with this tool we can create different scenario. Like what? As an example, when we wanted to use different response for the same request, we can handle this with the create mock scenario. And also, when we wanted to add new features, because of its internal tool, we can eat at this easily. Now, this time we can start to 
discover our another test process is snapshot test. This test is actually my baby because I integrated this test three years ago in our team. Same as the smoke test, this is, is using the mocked data. Actually, we can't define this test as a required because we have still some flaky problems in precision. Also, we had some problem for scrolling and deep link, but we can fix this with the, some features. And in the next section, I will explain what will of that. And the beauty of this test, we can see the results in the easily in our Slack and DevOps integration. Now, just sorry, I need to check something, okay. Now we can see one of the example for the deep link. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, you can see that we opened the application with using our internal deep link engine instead of Safari. And with this, we can reduce our starting process in the snapshot test very short. And you can see we can access the uh, relevant screen with the deep link. Now I'm gonna continue with the, uh, our select integration. I wanted to give an example for the all uh, snapshot uh, testing pipelines. As I mentioned before, Unit when unit test gives a build in the job, it sends a message to our relevant select channels. On the top, we can see the message for the uh, starting process, our snapshot testing. After that, we start the snapshot test jobs and we send the error message in the relevant select message thread. Now we can look at the message detail. On the left side, we can see the reference image and on, in the center, we can see the failure image. We developed a tool, a little tool, which we developed with the Python code, and we can compare the two images in easily, and also we can send the diff image on the right. With this development, QA and uh, developers can easily investigate what's the problem for these tests. Okay. And also, we are running this test in every day. With this feature, we have uh, some other uh, buttons, as you can see on the button. With these buttons, we have some other features to easily handle all the snapshot process. Now we can discover what's the button of using. Uh, and the first one, as you can see, show reference picture. With click this button, we can easily just showing only reference image in our web page. And also, if we wanted to rerun the just one single snapshot test, we can use, it, use the rerun test button. Now we can discover the other update and create a task button. Okay. In this example, you can see a snapshot result that needs to be updated after development has been done. When we need to update this, we can click the update button. And after that, the failed image, as I uh, mentioned before, which we store on the file server, is saved over the reference image uh, in, on the file server. And also from now on uh, is uh, then start being used as the up-to-date reference image. And also after this process, we sent to the message to the relevant select channels to inform that everything is okay in like this. And somehow, if any developer or QA members wanted to open Jira task for the snapshot test failure, then uh, he clicked the create Jira task button. With this feature, we can easily open a Jira task in our uh, tools. We added the reference and failure image in this Jira task, and we sent a message to the relevant select channels like this, again, to inform that. Okay, now I wanted to talk about another problem in our snapshot test is scrolling. 
You can watch the video. As you can see, the scrolling, the native scrolling in the simulator is really slow. And time to time, it causes a pro problem for us. Especially when our virtual machines has bottleneck, the simulators is running, uh, these tests are really slowly. And when the, uh, this test run with this situation, we do not get the exact position for each component all the time. And this is cause are in the flatness problems and we wanted to fix this. And we develop component scroll helper. Okay, now I wanted to show again this example because it's real fast. As you can see, we scroll uh, to the uh, selected component really fast. With this feature, we decrease our scrolling flaky problems with easily. Now I wanted to show a snapshot test beauty because with this feature we can easily automate all the checking with the snapshot controlling. Uh, as you can see in our product detail page, we write a lot of tests for just the one component. Now we can start our, the last UI test is a regression test. This test is our baby because we can check the client side and the backend flow with the regression test at the same time. We can run this test with the live data. That's why most of the time we know that this test can be flaky. And because of that, we can't define this test as a required in the merge request process. We run this test in every day and also after the release candidate creation. And also uh, QA daily uh, reviews these results at daily. At the same time, we wanted to uh, change our XC test plans easily and that's why we developed a tool which we called XC Test Planner. You can access this planner with QR code and also this link. It's an open source. This tool has a beautiful features to configure test plans easily. Thanks to tool, we can easily mute programmatic tests in the test plans and now on we can discover what's the main usage of the mute. Okay. On the top, as you can see, we, running, we run the daily develop test for the regression. On, as you can see, we have 19 failure tests for the develop branch. And now, after that, we wanted to uh, stop this test running for the other merge request in the same day. That's why we save this failure test in our database and we can check the, this failure test to stop after another merge request is running for the regression. As you can see, we muted 19 tests for this uh, test. Okay. The example on the slide, I tried to illustrate the scenario where the develop branch runs with the failing test. By preventing execution of tests that are failing in develop for this case, we save more than 25 minutes and we are able to decrease test durations up to 80% depending on fail counts. It's because we are running failure test twice rerun and when the failure test is increased, our gains the efficiency from the muting test also increases. And we are showing all the UI test analyzing in our Grafana dashboard. Our IS team can act uh, easily access all the results in the Grafana. As you can see, we can check the most failed and most rerun test name easily. Okay, now our test process is done, but also we have some another automated tool, like the automation label. This below measures the efficiency of quality and of the testing process. With the comment on the slide, we can see the level of the example PDP team. When we send the, this comment to the select channel, we can give the, uh, another message for the automation label. Okay, 
Actually, automation level is similar to Google test certification process for our internal uh, projects. In this here, we wanted to make standard our alt, uh, UI test system uh, and we wanted to be sure that every team has the same requirements for themselves. As you can see, we have some uh, different metrics to measure what's the automation level. And also we can, uh, we can, we are showing the result uh, in the Grafana dashboard again. In here, we can easily check the level for the each features and the metrics. And now I wanted to show the, our other automation features. We save our developer information in our database. And if we wanted to uh, select any reviewers for the merge request or the case, we can handle it easily in our algorithm. As you can see, we can select the six different developers for one merge request and also one case. Okay. And the last one, we have another uh, automation features. The first one, ad hoc, and the second one, IPA size checking. When any developer or QA members uh, export the IPA for the some branch, they send the comment to the, as you can see, on the Slack channel. With this comment, we can calculate IPA size for the relevant merge request easily, and we can send the, send, send the message to the message thread. And also, at the same time, we send the IPA file to the relevant message thread, and we can download our phone easily. Now, another beauty is the R test flight automation. As you can see with this command, we sent to our package to the test flights easily. And the last ones are autopull for merge request and daily merge request reminder. The first one is uh, our, we, we are using to be sure that all merge requests is up to date in every day. And we use the last one is for the remind all developers their responsibility to specific time of the day. And now I wanted to talk about what are gonna be do for the feature. Okay. The first one is a generic process. Right now we just only support two different teams in our company. And in the future we probably support more than two uh, that's why we have to generate our, all the automation system for every team. And also we increase the automation system to handle all the manual process easily again. And the last one, we have uh, two plans to de develop new tools to uh, fix problem other feature teams easily. And I think that's it. Uh, in the end, no matter how, what, everything is fine. Thank you for listening to me. Okay. Okay. We have a few minutes for questions, if you have any. Okay. Question there. Thank you for, for your talk and uh, thank you for also mentioning Swifter and the uh, loading problem. You just saw me a bug probably for a few weeks ago. Sorry, actually, Swifter, I don't hear you. Can you hear me? So yes, sorry. right now it's okay. So we're saying thank you for mentioning Swifter and okay. uh, as well the loading, uh, the slow loading problem because uh -huh. you just saw me a bug probably for, uh, the, <laughs> for my next week. So thank you for that. Ah, okay. So, <laughs> I was just wondering, this is a huge system you have in place yes. for, uh, for the for thing. How many people did it take to, to create uh, all this thing? All the system. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, setting up Jenkins, setting up, uh, I think yes. it's Azure DevOps, the DevOps tool you're using or something else. Uh, Jenkins. No, but before that you had a DevOps tool. The, actually, we are using the DevOps tool for uh, to develop Vipers affiliate like this. Okay, no, okay. okay. Then, but then you get uh, Jenkins, you get the setup of all the machines. Yes. And all the stuff. Yes. My question is, how many people did they... Actually, in the platform team, we are uh, five people to handle all of the pipelines. Okay, so no coding, just pipelines, right? No, actually, we are also IS developers. We develop new features for our Trendyol project time to time. That's a hell of a job. Yes. <laughs> well, well, done. well done. Actually, we love develops process. That's why we develop all of this stuff. It's like our hobbies. Yes. Well done. Yes, thank you. Do we have other questions? Hi, I'm Mati. Thank you for your presentation. Yeah, it's well. really impressive what okay. you've shown us. Uh, I didn't get what the uh, iOS application team, how big it is in your company. How big it is? Like how many people? Uh, right now we have more than 60 developers, just 60. developers. And also we have QA members and products and managers and leaders. Actually, yeah. it's like a hundred maybe. Yes. That's quite a scale. Yes. So uh, the organization is big and there are many people, mm -hmm. as I understand. Uh, were there any challenges when you introduced, uh, for example, your testing framework for snapshots? Because it's not uh, like standard XC test. And whenever you introduce something new as a framework in the company, actually, it might be some you know, friction and some uh -huh. uh, problems when you do that. Were there any and how you solve them? Uh, actually, for the uh, snapshot test, as an example, we cannot handle for the round this test like unit test because we are using Viper, mod uh, Viper architecture. And that's why we, it's not easy for us to cre uh, creating the mock view uh, for the Vipers. That's why we handle the snapshot test like a UI test, mm. if you uh, ask to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you use any generators for the Viper? Because it consists of a few layers. Right? Actually, we have template, but it's an internal template. Uh, it uh, just creates the class definition and uh, protocol definition, that's it. As I understand, the snapshot tests yes. are run like UI tests, and you just yes. scroll over the views and you take pictures, snapshots of them, right? Yes, yes. Have you ever tried iOS snapshot testing? Uh, actually, no, because when uh, three, two years ago, uh, when I watched uh, uh, point three, yeah. maybe you know, they developed the snapshot testing library. Yeah. And then after that, I said to myself, why we do not try give a shot for this library? And after that, we developed this snapshot. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Really Thank cool. you. Thank you for Thanks. the question. Okay, maybe one last big question. Okay. Hi there. Uh, Hi. Thank you for the talk. Uh, I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit more about your scroll helper. Uh, I was wondering if it's like in process or if you managed to implement that through the accessibility framework or just a little bit more detail. Yes, of course. Actually, component snapshot help per development is not finished yet. And uh, if we finish the component scroll helper, we will open as an open source and we will share the, this library in Twitter probably. And you can uh, access with this here. But right now, it's still a uh, development. Okay, got okay. it. Thank you. Oh, okay. okay. So, let, please uh, give her uh, another huge round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you.